The Beckman Argyros Award in Vision Research celebrates the friendship of two remarkable men, Dr. Arnold O. Beckman and Ambassador George L. Argyros. In 2013, the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation established the Beckman Argyros Award in Vision Research to recognize and support outstanding vision scientists. Dr. Jeremy Nathans of the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine has been selected as the 2016 recipient of the Beckman Argyros Award in Vision Research. Dr. Nathans has made groundbreaking discoveries that have advanced our understanding of the structure and function of the human retina and the mechanisms of inherited retinal disease. Our research focuses on the blood vessels that supply the retina. This is the light sensing layer of cells at the back of the eye. A variety of serious retinal diseases are caused by defects in these vessels. Retinal blood vessels can be seen with the aid of an ophthalmoscope. In fact, they're the only blood vessels in the body that can be seen directly. By using a fluorescent tracer, an ophthalmologist can assess the flow of blood through the retinal vessels and determine whether the vessels are leaky. This is one of the most important tests available for diagnosing retinal disease. Our work in this area began with a group of inherited diseases in which the retinal blood vessels fail to grow normally. In one set of experiments, we genetically engineered mice to have the same gene defects that cause these diseases in humans. In studying these mice, we observed just one layer of blood vessels in the retina instead of the three layers that are normally present and this one layer was not sufficient to supply all of the oxygen and nutrients that the retina requires. We discovered that two inherited retinal vascular diseases are caused by defects in a critical signaling system that controls blood vessel growth and development. A signaling protein produced by supporting cells diffuses to the nearby blood vessels where it binds to a receptor on their surface. This binding event causes proteins inside the blood vessel cell to accumulate and migrate to the nucleus where they change gene expression and the properties of the blood vessel. In looking around Johns Hopkins, it was apparent that Dr. Nathans was uh, one of the greatest stars ever to come here. He had innovative ideas, he was highly productive, and most importantly to me, he fit beautifully into the culture of Johns Hopkins because he was collegial, congenial, and collaborative. And he was also brilliant. What a combination. Jeremy's made many different contributions from the beginning of uh, discovery of the, uh, the genes that allow color vision to understanding how that is then uh, transduced uh, to allow uh, color vision in, in cells. His interests are, are quite uh, broad, uh, both broad and deep, actually. Most of our scientists will talk about their research and their discoveries. Jeremy, I think, has this ability to help people think about how to think and help people think about how to design experiments in general. And that's something that he's, uh, in his own work, a personally a great example of, but it's um, very broad in its applications. It's not just about the eye or any particular disease or problem, but it's um, the kind of skill set that any brilliant young scientist would love to have. I was first introduced to vision research in 1980. At that time, I had just started as an MD-PhD student at Stanford, and I had the good fortune to hear Dennis Baylor and Lubert Stryer. They were both professors at Stanford, and they described their research on the mechanism of light detection in the eye. I was captivated by the elegance of their experiments and by the extraordinary performance of the eye. The eye is not only physically beautiful, but it is beautiful in an engineering sense. Charles Darwin referred to it as an example of extreme perfection. I was very fortunate to be starting my PhD research in the laboratory of David Hognes, a remarkable scientist and mentor who encouraged me to follow this new interest. And I was doubly fortunate to have Lubert Stryer, another remarkable scientist and mentor, as an informal advisor. Over the ensuing six years, we applied the then new recombinant DNA technology to identify the genes that code for the light receptors in the human retina and we showed that rearrangements in these genes are responsible for color blindness. After starting my own lab as an investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute and a faculty member at the Johns Hopkins Medical School, we broadened our research to include retinal diseases such as retinitis pigmentosa and macular degeneration, as well as retinal development, cell biology, and biochemistry. Everything that we have accomplished derives from the talent and dedication of a great team of students and colleagues. 
although he's very busy in the laboratory, which he loves, and where he's internationally distinguished, uh, he also finds time to help colleagues in other departments, not just our own here in ophthalmology, but in many other departments. He is always available. He answers emails immediately. He's very kind and deferential to all of his colleagues, and he's very helpful. The Beckman Argyros Award in Vision Research continues the tradition of scientific excellence that characterized Dr. Arnold O. Beckman's career. Dr. Beckman was a chemist, engineer, inventor, businessman, civic leader, and philanthropist. He revolutionized the science and engineering worlds by developing and manufacturing a wide variety of scientific instruments, including pH meters and spectrophotometers, oxygen sensors, and centrifuges. The Beckman spectrophotometer has been called the most important instrument ever developed for biomedical science. Among Dr. Beckman's many contributions to society are better incubators for premature babies and more accurate instruments for measuring air pollution. Together with his wife, Mabel Beckman, Dr. Beckman founded the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation to promote scientific research and education. Through their foundation and through their many gifts, Dr. and Mrs. Beckman have created centers for scientific excellence throughout the United States, supported science education for elementary school children, and established the Arnold O. Beckman Postdoctoral Fellows, the Beckman Young Investigators, and the Beckman Scholars Program to support young researchers in chemistry and biology. Mr. Argyros is a businessman, investor, philanthropist, advisor to universities, and former ambassador to Spain. During his multifaceted career, Ambassador Argyros built a successful real estate business, owned the Seattle Mariners baseball team and AirCal Airlines, and served as chairman and chief executive officer. He has been a trustee of the California Institute of Technology and of Chapman University. Ambassador Argyros served as chairman of the board of the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation from 1990 to 2012, overseeing $600 million in philanthropic gifts and initiatives. There's no one more generous uh, than Jeremy, and considering his brilliance and his uh, devotion to laboratory efforts, uh, it's somewhat surprising that he gives such a tremendous amount of his time, his tremendous generosity, to so many other people and to so many other organizations. He is both very creative um, as well as extremely rigorous. Uh, and those two things uh, together really um, create a unique individual. Support from the Beckman Argyros Award will be critical for the next phase of our research on retinal vascular disease. We're especially excited by this support because it's going to allow us to study blood vessel growth and development in new and different ways.